I'm Pastor Jeff Johnson. Welcome once again to our third Lenten lunch. Um, we're glad you're here today. Uh, let's give a big round of applause for our fabulous meal. Um, and please, if you want to get some to go, um, I, you know, I'm, I think they can serve that up after we're done. A um, couple of things. The tablecloths on the tables today are in honor, strangely, I, I was informed of this, not of Sweden, which is the historic um, uh, ethnic origin of First Lutheran, but indeed they're in honor of Ukraine. These are Ukrainian colors today. So thank you to, for the pastor's aid for doing that. Um, also, um, does everyone have one of these postcards you can take with you for advertisement? Um, if you don't, I can give you one. Just put your hand up and I'll come around. Um, what else can I tell you? We have fabulous lunch next week. Um, we have, we've got three more. Um, and please bring a friend because we're really, this ministry is like so many other church ministries, building itself back up incrementally. And it just takes, it's, we can do all the advertisement in the world, but all it takes is really word of mouth and say, what a great way to spend $5 for lunch, you know. And this ministry has been around for almost 40 years, and we certainly don't see it um, going by the wayside. So I will stop talking. I've asked our beloved friend, Ann Beauregard, to introduce Mary Weldon today um, because she could say more than I could ever say about Mary, but we're thrilled that she's here today. There's lots of stuff. I think there's stuff on your tables for you to take away. Um, there are a lot of um, um, graphics up here. I'm going to help hold some of them up if you need to see them and bring you to them. And obviously we have some question and answer period afterwards. But before we continue, let us um, say grace. Gracious God, thank you for this beautiful day in the beginnings of spring. We thank you for the blessings of the lo this life, as well of all good gifts, because all good gifts from, come from you, O oh Lord. Bless the meal that we're about, to, we, we have taken to the nourishment of our bodies, and bless the hands and the hearts that made it, and bless the people of the world right now as they struggle with fear and aggression and the unknown. Um, all this we ask in your name that is holy. Amen. Now, in the spirit of Jim Benson, before we go on, beloved Jim Benson, who has been um, gone from us four years now, Jim loved to tell a joke or two before um, every lecture. And I'm a terrible joke teller, but I do have one riddle for you. And so you have to think about this. What do you call a sleepwalking nun? There you go, a Roman Catholic. Mm. Oh, Anne had to think about that. <laughs> okay, all righty. Please, everybody, um, Anne Beauregard is going to welcome Mary. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming today. And as we're celebrating International Women's Month, uh, Mary is the first director of the Old Colony Planning Council that celebrated 50 years that's probably 54 years old now. And uh, this is a conglomerate. It's a quasi-government nonprofit that includes all these surrounding communities. Uh, they exist throughout the Commonwealth. They have different names. This one locally is here, Old Colony Planning Council. It addresses a variety of different issues, and I will be letting her speak on that. Mary Waldron is... Um, has raised her family here. She was the former, uh, the, um, what do I want to say, chief of staff under Jack Units, one of the may uh, previous mayors of the city of Broughton. She later went on to run, an, a, again, a quasi-government uh, nonprofit, which um, brought in of market basket to Broughton, <laughs> very important. But in, all, in other words, it was economic development for this city. Here she is, she serves on several boards in the community from Signature Broughton Hospital, which is a near and dear to many of us. She also had worked at the State House where she met her uh, late husband and um, 
We're um, honored to have her here. Her daughter and son-in-law uh, now reside in the city too. And uh, Mary, uh, well, thanks for coming here, Mary. <laughs> Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think I'm about as maybe as high as short as uh, as Anne. So uh, um, I hope everybody can, everybody can hear me back there. Terrific. First of all, I want to say thank you to the pastor for being for just having these Lenten services. Um, I know former um, resident Lynn Smith was very active and still is active in many things, even though she's in Rhode Island. I also want to say thank you to Anne. Um, Anne's involvement in this community is unwavering, and I want to just put a couple exclamation points upon that. If you, we were just sitting at our table that if you want to know about what's going on in Brockton, it really is through Anne and Brockton Community Access, myself, residents, businesses. Um, she really is an energizer bunny, so thank you, Anne, for the introduction. Um, and I just also want to just send a quick hello to um, my friend Vicki Johnson, who is here with the church with the I know and um, Vicki was my daughter Casey's kindergarten teacher and when I come up here and to see Vicki we both come in become in tears um, it's been many years and uh, my daughter now is 27 so you can imagine when we still see each other we're able to give our love and prayers and blessings for each other so thank you Vicki um, and I will promise, and I don't have any Jim Benson jokes, and I promise never to do them because I'm never the one to get them either. But um, this seems all overwhelming, right? If you kind of pan around here, like, what did she bring? There's all this stuff. Um, but the Old Colony Planning Council is a regional planning agency. There were 13 of us in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the one that we have, and I have a map here to the left, I don't need to have the, the pastor put it up yet, but I encourage you after to come and take a look at these boards. So there are 17 communities in our district, 17 from Brockton to Avon to Stoughton to Pembroke to East Bridgewater, Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, Plymouth, Plimpton, Hanover, Hanson, Halifax. I'm missing a couple, <laughs> but, but there's a lot. And I've been, at the, I've been with this organization for two years, and I'm still getting to know about these communities, but we meet with them on a yearly basis. So what's the same thing, you know, what's going on with Brockton that has the same thing going on with the, a little town like Plimpton? Well, there's a lot. You have dedicated elected or appointed officials who care dearly about the quality of life of a community. So in Brockton, right, we're 106,000, um, and I say we because I live here, there's 106,000 people that live in the city. But if you are in your own neighborhood, whether it is here in Campello or Montello or the east side or west side or south side or north side, you all want what's best for your communities. Um, and that takes good zoning, that takes good communication, that takes someone to have a planner. So in, here in the city of Brockton, there's Rob May who's a city planner and there's an assistant planner. But some of these small communities have no planners at all. So you're wondering, like, how do you go, if you have someone like a big company coming in, and how do you properly plan, and they're coming in and say, hey, we want to be in your backyard. That's where we come in. That's where we come in as an organization. So I have 22 staff members. Their pictures are on some of these boards here. Um, but we, we deal with issues such as transportation, economic development, environmental issues, and we also deal with um, the aging population. So I know Ann told me that specifically is gonna have a lot of interest for folks here, but we have a wide variety because that's what it takes for us to have good quality, um, a, a quality of environment that within your community. So Ann right here is just showing the board that we have. And the reason why we have these boards because we recently held um, an expo that we had over 100 people attend from the different communities to know more about us. Um, but before you stay right there, Ann, but before we go there, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about where we're located. So my office, um, again, which has 22 staff members, we're located in the Thomas Edison building, the downtown, right where the Metro South Chamber of Commerce is. We're right at that corner. So it's the, it's, it's, it's a national, it's, I'm sorry, it's a historic um, place and we are, um, we preserve it. Um, 
a lot of, because it's an older building, we have a lot of things that go along with that. But it's, if you are ever in the neighborhood, our doors are open for you to come in and see the beauty. I walk in the morning and I see the sunrise and it's hitting those beautiful um, wooden beams. And I was like, this is where Thomas Edison had his work planned. Like, like I could be standing in the same shoes in the same place as Thomas Edison. It just really does blow me away in terms of that beautiful history. Um, so we're so while we are not Thomas Edison and, and creating the first electrified you know, railroad or street light or things of that nature, we are in many cases we're the first in in how we are helping our communities grow. So one of the things that Anne is showing particularly is the Area Agency on Aging. So I don't know, maybe a show of hands, how many have heard of Old Colony Elder Services? Old Co yes. So they're wonderful, right? And they're just in downtown as well. Well, my organization, the Old Colony Planning Council, funds the Old Colony Elder Services. So we have monies that come through us that get then passed down to Old Colony Elder Services. Um, but if you can see, we have staff. We're also working an ombudsman program. So if those that don't know what the ombudsman program is, it's specifically for nursing homes within the area. Um, if you have a loved one who's in a nursing home, the ombudsman comes in and works with the families to make sure that the services are being addressed. So a lot of it is confidential. A lot of it is, um, is sensitive topics, right? But particularly during COVID, it was difficult and families may not have been getting the services they need. So Lila Burgess, who is the director of the program, her picture, well, her picture's over there, but they are looking for volunteers. Um, I told her I, I, I have her card and people who can volunteer their time. Um, we'll, we'd love to have you. Um, but the ombudsman program has been around for a number of years. I will tell you that is as pretty close to God's work that um, you may ever find because you just can't put a price on that tender loving care for a fellow, for somebody who is not related to you, but yet they care for your loved one as if it's their own. Um, we also have another program called the Assisted Living, and this just recently got funded. So there are 64 assisted living facilities in our region, 64. There are, oh, I'm gonna have to look at, the, I'll have to look at the, the numbers, but there are something like 40 something uh, nursing homes in our, in our catchment area as well. The two women, two, three women that we have going to these different facilities must, not if, like must go four times a year to these facilities to do a check-in, in addition to like the regular work in between. And again, where, where resources may not be as always dedicated, right? For those that have come, gone to a nursing home, the ratio of nurses or staff to patients is pretty low. Um, and so their role, their role for the ombudsman program and the assisted living is really to kind of help and see what's needed. And it, really the bottom line is making sure that your loved ones and those that are there that are getting the services and feel that they have a voice. So that's what um, Lila and uh, Lila Burgess, Jane Seelig are the two for the ombudsman program. And Gabrielle is um, working, Gabrielle um, Sylvain Jean is um, working for the assisted living program. So um, thank you, Anne, for that. So, but there's a, there's a residence rights. Again, um, I, will, I will make sure that you all have that information, like every human being in, this, in our region should have information about that. But that's the ombudsman program, and um, David Klein is the director, and um, we have some staff members who work on the fiscal. But it is because of the federal funds, the, with the whole um, um, ARPA funds, they called it, CARES funds, it's the federal funds that have come. We've received over $3.5 million, $3.5 million to go toward addressing the needs of the elderly in, in either a nursing home or in a um, assisted living. And all of those funds are managed and have great team to make sure that every single penny that needs to go to a, um, a, um, an elder person are getting the, the, the needs that they have. So I'm gonna leave that there. Um, if you are interested, they're looking for um, volunteers to drive folks. They're looking for volunteers to um, assist the directors, right? How do you get to four, 64 facilities? Well, the way that you do that is you have volunteers and the program pays for your travel. 
And with gas prices so high, we know that that may be a challenge, but there's an opportunity to give back and to be helpful um, and be ambassadors for the program. So that's the assisted living program. Anne has it nice and organized because it's all right there. Thank you, Anne. So if you have, yes, Anne. Oh, five oh. Thank you, thank you. The phone number. So we have a number of ways of reaching us. The, our phone number is five zero eight five eight three one eight three three. You can walk into the office and talk to a staff member. And again, that's 70 School Street here in Brockton. And um, our website is www.ocpcrpa.org. And, um, and again, I have some cards that I can leave with everybody if you're interested. So that's one whole program that I could probably talk the rest of the day about. But we all have all these other programs. And um, so we have a transportation department. And um, I was just on a meeting today. And we are having over I'm to, I'm like, $150 million coming to our region for transportation projects. Again, that's $150 million, but that's over 17 communities. And how do you, you know, when one project costs $10 million alone, you can see, you can imagine, thank you, Ann. Um, I think you just took the pastor's job away, but that's okay. <laughs> but, um, the, um, but the transportation department really deals with your DPW, your highway departments. Um, here in the city of Brockton, we deal with um, um, Pat Hill, who's a commissioner, and obviously the mayor, and looking at their priorities. So if there is an economic development project going on, let's say over here, we wanna make sure that the infrastructure, the roads, the sewer, the street lights, the, you know, the walk button, right? In order to put a walk button in on a, on a, near a street light, that is gonna probably cost somewhere close to a million dollars just to do, the re, to do the engineering. It's kind of crazy when you think about how much that could cost, but it is. And so our goal is to make sure that if there's an economic development project going on, there's transportation. Um, so we're right on Main Street a couple years ago. Um, our organization did a Main Street corridor study, and we went, we studied all the different, the um, public safety issues related to Main Street from Avon, sorry, Avon, from West Bridgewater, this way, to Avon um, on the north side, and we went through every single stop site. In fact, um, what's the street right up here? We had, Nielsen. yes, Nielsen, thank you. Nielsen is a huge issue and is in our radar, um, has been on our radar. I went before the Brockton, Commission, Brockton um, Traffic Commission and gave them our recommendations that we did an assessment, and then those recommendations got sent to the mayor's office to deal with. So it still is an issue, right? There's, you know, in terms of walk buttons and slowing down methods and things, when we make recommendations, we just don't say, hey, go do these. What we say is, here's some things that are inex less expensive, right? Things that doesn't require much, um, uh, much, many resources. But then there's gonna be some things, like I said, in order to do a, a, a street light over, it's gonna be more expensive, but it's what's needed to make everything safe. And that is the goal of what the work that we do is to make roads and highways and anything in our district to be safe. So that's information. We have Charlie Kilmer, who heads up um, our, the organization. He has been with the organization for 26 years. He is known throughout the whole region as like the EF Hutton of transportation, and he works for us, and he's an amazing um, resource. So thank you, Anne. And I, I do, I have a whole number of staff members um, in that division. And then I have the division of community planning and economic development. Um, so we have people, uh, Dottie Fuginetti, who is a select board member from the town of Easton. She is on our, she is in that division as well as Joanne Zygman, who is a Brockton resident on the Conservation Commission. Um, a wealth of information and, and just incredible. But they work on various things. So we're, we just received $400,000 um, two years ago to have um, someone just work with our communities about how to be um, smarter in terms of how we're spending funding. So um, the old Colony Planning Council applied for some funding to develop the Brockton app. And I know it's a little bit more of a, um, a technology thing, but it, what it does was it's helping to identify the different businesses within different towns. Why do we need that? Well, if we are looking to support economy, we need to buy local. 
you know, we shouldn't be buying from China. We shouldn't be, and I'm not saying it's um, terrible to do that, but if we have resources that we have right here within our border, within our region, so when I started, I made a decision saying that we cannot go outside of our region to bring in a vendor. And why? Because if we are looking to support our 17 communities, we should be supporting the businesses in those communities as well. Um, so there's lots of different things from, that are going on here in Brockton, but also when we were working with the town of Plymouth, they just did a, a huge uh, water sewer project that was 1.4 million. And why that's important? Well, if you're gonna bring industries, you need to have the capacity to take on the septic um, topics that go along with that. So again, it's, it's good communication. It's um, not overstepping our boundaries. Um, hey, let's go do this for a certain town. And then they say, well, we don't wanna do that. Uh, but we, we make sure it's a two-way street. We meet at least once or twice with each community. They tell us their needs. And then we then go to the community to make sure that we are visually seeing. Um, we go be before the Board of Selectmen um, uh, meetings, or we will go before a planning board meeting. Um, we've been working really closely with the town of Avon, um, and uh, just they've received a, a, a number of funding. So housing is another topic that we work on, and um, it's... It, it, we, we have so many different people who have experts in that field, and ideally would be, you know, when, you know, when sometimes people talk about affordable housing, um, it's often talked about um, in a negative sense. And I'm telling you, housing isn't a bad word at all. It is a necessity, and as we know, many folks who cannot even afford to live in Brockton anymore because the rents have gone up. Um, so our role is really to work and to identify affordability, um, but also equity. Uh, the fact that we have three train stations here in Brockton is an asset to this community um, because many of the jobs are not, maybe not here, but they're in Boston. And I think Ann um, had made a, a comment at one of the chamber meetings maybe a couple years ago, but it was like the MBTA is very costly to go into Boston, so we need to find ways to make that much more affordable. So that's a little bit about who we are. Um, there's day-to-day -day operations of, of um, working on, on folks. We have um, rebranded ourselves. Um, we have young folks coming in as well as people who have been around. But um, that's a little bit of a snippet, and I can get in a little bit more, but I don't know if anybody has any questions about who we are or, um, or about anything. Yes. Hi, Janet. Can you tell us a little bit about the train that is headed to Bedford? So the question is to know about the South Coast Rail, and I can tell you that. We get weekly updates. It is happening. It's happening slowly, but there have been some improvements in New Bedford and the communities that are, that are um, along the route. It will be coming through the current line that comes here to, um, through Brockton. Um, but it's an extension of the Lakeville. So if you were to get on um, a train here in Brockton and go south, it will take you to Lakeville, the Lakeville Middleborough line. That's what it is, Middleborough line. Um, they're gonna be, what they're doing for the South Coast Rail to get to New Bedford and Fall River is to build, continue to, to build the tracks from there. And then, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that, that go into that as well. Um, railroad crossings, here, here, here in Brockton, we're really lucky where all of our, our trains are over a trestle. Um, as many of you have seen in the news, the, um, in places up on the North Shore, that there's been some terrible, terrible tragedies that have happened because of either a broken arm or something stuck along the lines. We really are truly lucky, and it's one of the engineering feats that I, I know that, um, that I, I don't know, I think it might even be on the um, historic um, preservations, but the fact that there is a trestle that trains, commuter rails go over and people can walk in to do the things that they need to. So the update is, I think within maybe two years, Janet, um, that might be when it comes to fruition, but I do know that, that recently some additional funds have been put into the South Coast Rail project because as with everything else, steel and construction and everything else, those prices have gone through the roof and there's been a little bit of delay in getting those materials as well. Anne. How can people find out about your meetings and, and how they can contribute? Yes. 
So the question is how to find out about the Old Colony Planning Council meetings. Um, we, they are all posted, they're public meetings because we are a quasi-public entity. So they're posted on our website. We do post them with every single town, city and town clerk. So if there's a clerk's board, um, it's also, not everybody goes to townhouses and city halls, but they are um, publicly posted on our website. And that's the um, ocpcrpa.org website. But they are public and so our council meetings, let me just tell you a little bit too, I really haven't touched upon our council members. And so they're the legislative body. They're like, the, they're, they're, the, they're the, are my directors, board of directors, if you will. Um, each community, each of the 17 communities has a delegate and has an alternate each community. They, it is appointed by the town. So not every community has two representatives. We have one community that only has, has none, um, but we have, so those are the boards and um, they all, we, because of Zoom, if you live in Plimpton, you don't have to drive all the way to Brockton. Um, so you can join virtually and it's been really helpful. And um, many of them are boards of selectmen, some of them are planners, some of our transportation folks, some of them are just citizens who have a great interest. So here in Brockton, the delegate is Sidney Marrow from the mayor's office, and then the alternate, his name is Preston Huckabee, and he's an engineer. And so, right, you have someone who's been here and somebody who's an engineer. It's really becomes a resource for the staff. Um, we're not all engineers in the department, so we can go to the board members to serve as a resource. Any other questions? I love, I could talk about Old Colony Planning Council. So as Ann said, I came from Bridgewater State University where we, where I dealt with the regional aspects of um, research and working with the county commissioners. Um, we work with our fellow regional planning agencies and, and, and looking at ways to help our communities to thrive. Um, and that means, you know, typically what would happen in the past is our region would get passed over, um, not, um, indifference to anyone who was before me, but they would go down to New Bedford or they'd be going to Fall River. We're making them stop. We're making them take another look at this region. Um, as, as you can imagine, there isn't really a, a great highway that goes from, from, from Brockton to Plymouth. You have to go down um, 24 to pick up 495 to go to 44, or you can wiggle your way 139 and wiggle your way that way. It really isn't an easy way to cover that, but we're talking about ways that we can connect and um, and one of the ways truly has been to pick up the phone and have a communication. It's been also to, um, to hold these meetings to convene and have discussions. So, yes, Ann. Oh, oh Pastor. Okay. You raise a really good, you really raise a good point, Anne, in terms of, we'll call it, we call that under, in our organization, um, outreach and engagement. Um, it's all of our jobs. Like, we don't have a specific person who's hired just to do outreach and engagement. I, all 22 of the staff members' jobs, whether you're an intern or whether you've been around for 26 years, it's all of our jobs to be outreaching and engage. It's what we do with that information when we get there. So Anne asked me to share my phone number and contact and things of that nature in addition to um, the business cards that I have. But it is all of our jobs. It's our jobs to kind of have our pulse to knowing what's going on. We listen to um, um, our, our partner WATD because they seem to be really the one that covers a lot of the region. There's also some other avenues. We have Brockton Community Access here, but we work with the other community access stations within the region. We've gone to the different communities to, to talk with. Like I said, we've gone to Board of Selectmen's meeting. Um, our, to the point of we need to hear from the pulse. So one, we also have conducted, when COVID first hit, the first thing we did was we sent an email out to each of the community saying, what do you need us to do? We'll stay out of the way where you don't need us, but we'll help you where you do. And it was very helpful. Many of the community said, nope, we're good already. Um, but some of them said, we just, how do you create a Zoom account? And many of them didn't know how to do that. And so we had staff members who would walk them through. Um, 
you know, it's as simple as that, or even just showing up to an event um, that they have going on that whether it's gonna be um, bike month, it's the bike to work month is coming up in May, and we wanna make sure that communities know that, that biking truly is, uh, uh, that was your question? Um, the, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the, but, but it is really important that we look at alternative ways for people to go to work, to, for recreational purposes. Um, and so we'll be doing a couple of events and we'll be telling, we'll make sure that we get that back out to you. Pastor. Um, just a, a sort of a closing question. Um, what in a, you've been with Oak Holly New Walk House for two years Yes. Now. What do you think, and you came in essentially when the pandemic began. Yes. What was the most, what has been the most satisfying experience in your leadership thus far? That's a, your takeaway? that's a really good question because sometimes we just go so fast we don't stop and ask that question. So the question was asked, what's the takeaway in terms of um, what's come from the pandemic and, um, and, the, and, and obviously the leadership. I have been so incredibly pleased with the professionalism of the staff. Um, they, there isn't, they are not counting the hours that they're in the office, I can tell you. 99% of my staff puts in more than 35 hours. They probably put in close to 50, 60 hours and then some. Like, they, they don't watch the clock because they know the need. So in the town of Hanson, small town of Hanson, they have, um, they've had some turnover in terms of town administrators and planners. Staff has literally handheld them through a process and now they've been off and running and seeing them go and it's just, kind of like sitting back and watching your, your baby grow up, right? And, and because you put your tender loving care into that. So that's Hanson and um, from my leadership, um, it was, um, I, I, it's hard to describe because I thought we were gonna be needing to do layoffs and how do we address it? And one of the things I, I told my staff, I, we called them all together, we were having staff meetings. I said, I, I can't predict the future. But I said, I will let you know as soon as I know, you will know, so you can plan. And that was the only thing, and the staff came up and I asked them what they needed and you know, how do you stay in touch with them? So we have staff meetings. Um, I, when we were able to get back together, we had a retreat. And um, one of the internal things that I do is that uh, not only the staff does a self-evaluation of themselves, their managers, and then I have the staff evaluate me on a yearly basis. And so I take that information to say, what can I do to improve myself? And as hard as it is, some of my managers didn't want that to happen because like, I don't wanna hear what they have to say, but we do need to hear that because if they're, here, if, they're, if they're willing to have the courage to tell me how to improve, then that means they care about the organization. They care about the communities. Um, we can never address all the topics of needs in, in, in the 17 communities, but we can help them prioritize and then we prioritize and then we, continue to work with them. So um, if there are no other questions, I appreciate the, the questions, um, but thank you very much. Oh. Oh, just, I was gonna ask you to mention the DBA and what's going on. I will, I will do that. So let me first give my contact for my real job. My paying job is, um, um, it's M Waldron at W-A-L-D-R-O-N at O-C-P-C-R-P-A.org. Um, the phone number again, 508-583-1833. And all the information is on my business card. And what Janet was referring to is that I am the interim, and I promised myself that it's interim, um, uh, president of the Downtown Brockton Association. Part of that came because our building is downtown. I pick up trash every day um, um, of all the things because it's my house, if you will. And um, so I've been interim for almost a, a year, and we're really having building that up. And, um, the, and we hold monthly meetings and they're all virtual. So um, thank you for asking the question, Janet. And, and thank you very much. And I just yeah. want to say too, you are a really inspirational leader, which she does help. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you, Mary, so much. Thank you, Anne, for bringing Mary to us. You do have cards with contact information. I do. I do. So she's got those if you want to talk. And I'm glad to hear anybody can go to a meeting. That's right.